Let's get some analysis on the instability in Egypt and how that's impacting the rest of the Arab world and talk to William Engdahl. I can see him on the line, geopolitical analyst and author of Myths, Lies and Oil War. Sir, good to have you on the programme tonight. Well, looking back at last week, two years, wasn't it, after Mubarak was overthrown, now the new democratically elected Egyptian president uh, uh, telling people in the centre of the capital that, uh, that he wants all these powers. It looks like the revolution's done a full circle, doesn't it? Well, I think we have a Sunni version of what happened when Ayatollah Khomeini uh, uh, replaced the Shah of Iran back in, in the late end of the 70s and talked about democracy and so forth, but co-opted the genuine democratic movement that, that you had on the streets in, in Iran and uh, created an Islamic dictatorship. You have a similar thing going on with, with Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood in, in Egypt, and that I think the Egyptian people feel betrayed and, and uh, double-crossed, Are you surprised by it? Not at all. Not at all. I, I wrote about this at the time, that this was uh, the background agenda that was going to come come to emerge. And it's, it's happened in Tunisia. It's happened in Egypt around Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood. And what they are, are uh, when they're not in power, they're, they have a moderate face that they put on in the United States, in Washington, with various Islamic organizations that they dominate in the U.S. Uh, but when they come into power, uh, they put a lock grip on power and essentially establish an Islamic dictatorship. Well, America was a big backer. Surely it knew that, didn't it? Well, I think uh, some people in Washington actually want this. They think this is a, a vehicle. It's, a, it's an internationalist Islamic organization. It's a secret society, much like a Masonic organization that uh, uh, operates as an untransparent. And uh, the CIA has had dealings with the Brotherhood since uh, they brought them out of Egypt into Saudi Arabia back in the early 1950s and uh, before that British intelligence. So I, I think they, they feel that they have a known entity in the Brotherhood and they might be in for a, a stark surprise. It's never sold like that to the great unwashed public, though, is it, of course? <laughs> um, you know, Again, standing back, looking back, we're also witnessing now these fresh protests in Libya and Tunisia, together with Egypt. They're the countries, of course, where the Arab Spring kicked off. Almost yeah. appears to be entering a new phase, doesn't it? It certainly has, and it's, it's a very dangerous phase. Now you have uh, an escalation with Turkey and the U.S.-backed uh, Patriot missile batteries on the border with Syria and reports that uh, Obama has given the green light for more active U.S. military intervention into Syria. Uh, I think the, the best possibility there is the call by, by the Russian government uh, on Bashar al-Assad, the president of Syria, to begin serious negotiations with the NCC opposition to try to uh, minimize the violence and, and the uh, turmoil there and not press for a military solution. Bashar has lost the military option at this point. That's clear to me from all the reports I get from sources inside Syria. William, thanks for being on the programme tonight. Only time for a quick chat. I'm afraid we're out of time. William Engdahl, author, thank you so much for being on the programme.